Saturdays. Tyler here at Greater Boston in New England. Checking in 3467 Wyndham Windup. Already North Shore winners. And this event here doing fantastic. It's a third play for them. Looking great as they go and get ready for district championships. 3467 is doing absolutely phenomenal. You've got to take a look at the overall just packaging of this robot. This arm that comes up is so cool, so accurate, and so fast. And I can't wait to dive more into what this is. A lot more that goes in this robot too from their iterations under that bumper intake going through. We're we'll talking about how they're doing some of their vision systems and more. So let's learn about Wyndham Windup and their crescendo robot here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Oh, let's start out talking about your superstructure and your team has been doing a lot of iterations throughout the season as well too, and we'll work our journey through that. What do you want to start with first and I'll walk us through it. Um, yeah, so the entire, um, this entire robot is based off this superstructure. Um, it's a single jointed arm pivoted off four chains. Uh, it's similar to how we had it last year. Um, and it's very simple, it's easy to do. It lets us do amp and have multiple position, positional angles to shoot. So as you're approaching this year's game of Crescendo, talk to me more about what that initial concept was like. Uh, what, where did you go and what, maybe from your initial thoughts, what changed uh, as we're here at Greater Boston? So originally we had an over bumper intake um, and just a one position shooter that only shot subwoofer. Uh, the shooter had vertical shooter wheels um, and the over bumper intake uh, had live axle, uh, but then we diverted to uh, had live axle aluminum plates. Then we diverted to aluminum uh, aluminum plates, quarter inch. That it's that ax uh, that axle, um, and we have horizontal shooter wheels instead, as we found to be more accurate. Well, let's start to break this down a little bit more. Uh, can you take us through your note journey? Uh, let's talk about your uh, under the bumper intake first, and we'll kind of work our way up. Yeah. So actually, we have the other intake right here. Um, that's it's our spare. So make sure. Um. So these are the two wheel, this is the wheel that initially touches it. Um, it has these things called flex wheels, which we use to better grip, um, better grip the note as it comes through. Uh, it has these centering wedges that help center the notes better as we didn't like active centering as much as we, uh, as it uh, drew too much power. So it's just, this is mixed, um, and this entire setup is a lot sturdier than we, what we had at week one, so we wouldn't break as often. So it comes in there nice and smooth. When you look at like uh, from centering your note, that sort of thing, uh, I noticed on there you got a couple of blocks on it as well too. Can you just talk to me about that process? Uh, any any concerns with jamming or anything like that, or how smooth has that process been for you? Um, it has been, it's been pretty smooth. Uh, we have Teflon tape on there, so just minimal friction. And as, as long as the driver drives into it uh, with a decent amount of velocity, um, it intakes pretty well. As it's also run off two Falcons, so we have more power, and they're individually powering the back rollers. And keep walking us through uh, different parts of your robot here. I love the arm that you've gone through. The shooter is super cool. What do you want to go with next? Um, let's talk about the second part of the shooter, which is the stage, what we refer to as a stage. The stage is five versa roller uh, things right back here. Um, they allow us to have better pickup and handoff between uh, the, sh like the shooter wheels and the intake. It also gives us acceleration going from accel initial acceleration and velocity before actually shooting the note, which allows us to be a lot more accurate. Um, and talk to me about your uh, wheel config on your shooter as well too, kind of interesting going with a different durometer in the middle of the uh, uh, shooter wheels. Yeah, so uh, we went with that as we just thought it would be better. We tested it, we tested it with all three solid, we tested it with two solid. We just found in our testing that this worked kind of the best and we just went with what we knew based off of it. Okay, and then from a, a packaging uh, standpoint, like. What made you want to choose like this type of superstructure packaging in regards to trying to get everything in your robot? Any, any major challenges that you faced while trying to design something like this? So the major challenge that we had was with the intake, um, as we want, wanted to go with the under bumper concept so we could ram into things without the risk of it being uh, damaged. Um, and to package it in such a small area, we had to come up with some creative ways to do so. 
Um, and then climbing was also another difficult part. So right here we have some climber hooks that we attach onto, uh, attach onto our arm. So as our arm goes into like an amp position almost, um, it, can, it can just go back down on the chain and it allows us to also have like three second climbs um, so we can score more, uh, score for a longer time than needing to climb early. So as the arm comes up, kind of walk me through a couple of these uh, stages that uh, your arm is going through. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, arm up. This is our climbing config. Um, it allows us to just grab the chain at anywhere about 32 inches. Um, and then if you want to put the arm back down, yeah, uh, it just, it's really quick, simple, easy, and it just rests in between here. Um, it's it's pretty balanced. Um, it and that's also the reason we went with four chains instead of two because it divides the workload over four chains. Um, and how about from a shooter perspective? What are, what are those different positions and states look like? Um, so you want to try subwoofer? So this is our subwoofer position. Um, shoot. Yeah, um, it's pretty simple. Um, and then we also have move on shoot, which allows us to be better scorers. Uh, we unfortunately can't do that now as we don't have an April type to track. Actually, no, yeah, we don't have an April tack to track, um, but it, it basically uh, uses pose instead of uh, instead of the April tag, and it allows us uh, to shoot on the move even if the camera is blocked, um, and it just works for us, and it's fair, it's like pretty accurate. So. All right, um, and I'm not sure who's going to cover this, but can we talk more about like your uh, your different types of pathing and what sensors you have on your robot, that sort of thing? So our ArduCam cameras are connected to an Orange Pi where we do all of our uh, pose calculations and that's how we get our shoot on the move data while our limelight helps us with note detection so we can do things like auto note pickup that uh, really just brings our autos to the next level and makes things much easier on our driver and uh, simplifies that for them. Yeah, and watching your last match, I mean, you're rocking a five and a half uh, no auto on the last one I saw. Can we uh, take a look at a couple of your paths on screen and just walk me through uh, what you're doing? Uh, sure. Uh, so, our five note auto, we start at the subwoofer here. We shoot uh, the note into the speaker, and then we go back and forth between the each of these notes and the speaker, and then we go all the way back to the midline and then bring the note back in into the speaker. We, uh, all of that is done, so we use a combination of the April tag lineup from the Ardu cams, and uh, when we get the notes, we use the auto note pickup um, using the limelight note detection, so that we can, even if the note is slightly off or another team took it, we can actually look for another note to take and uh, without interrupting our auto, so it can still be successful. Looking at district championships uh, coming up in a couple short weeks, any major changes or, or iterations you want to do from a uh, software side on your robot? Um, I think just making our autos a little bit faster and um, adding new ones that are more flexible with other teams. Um, we already have a lot of different options for what we, depending on what we want to do. Um, it depends on the situation we have. Uh, can pick up pretty much any note that is pre-staged on the field, um, but I think just getting that time down so we can maybe squeeze in another note. Something I, when I walk by your pit, and it's in uh, one of your teammates' hands right now that we really got to talk about. Uh, last week we interviewed 4028 Beak Squad, and this looks oddly familiar of something potentially to add on to your robot for future uh, uh, competitions. Talk to me about uh, this blower motor. Have you done any testing with it? And is this something we might see at district championships for your team? Yeah, so originally coming to the season, we had not prioritized trap at the time. Um, we were prioritizing speaker and amp shooting. Um, but now coming towards district champs, we want to be able to have that ability. Um, and after seeing uh, Beak Squad do it, um, we decided that you know our robot has the geometry to be able to do it. Um, so this is basically a uh, leaf blower that's run off of 775 um, that will, for uh, four district champs, will be mounted uh, right around our shooter area. Um, and then we'll have a set position on our shooter that will allow us to shoot right into the trap. That's really cool. And have you done any testing at your facility yet with this to see if it works? Uh, yeah, we tested uh, very little at our facility um, and then also at this event using the uh, first equipment um, we have tested with it. That's very cool. Can't wait to see how that works out on that. Uh, Wyndham Wind Up uh, overall for now machine. What do you want to wrap us up with uh, on your uh, robot here? So I kind of want to talk more about some autonomous stuff. So with, during autonomous, uh, using Pathfinder by Team 3015, um, we 
We also use auto pickup and auto shoot. If you um, and auto pickup works is it sees where um, it's based off this back limelight. Um, and as long as it sees the note, it can automatically move to its position and drive straight into it in about two seconds. If you want to show auto pickup. This wasn't the best demonstration um, as we just didn't have enough velocity, um, but. So the way that it's working on this, um, is the operator pressing a button or is it just an automatic state that it's detecting or what? Um, so usually we're about a couple more feet back than that, but we have a small pit area, but the driver presses a button as he's driving and it just as long as it sees its piece in the FOV, it uh, just drives straight back into it and picks it up. Well, Wyndham Wanda, congratulations on a great season. Uh, so far, we can't wait to see how you do here at Greater Boston, but District Championships coming up in a couple short weeks, so good luck there. And uh, thanks for uh, taking time to tell us more about your robot. It's a very inspirational robot that I think a lot of teams can learn a lot from. So thanks a lot and good luck. Yeah, thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.